Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today to preview our match this Sunday against Minnesota United SC2. For today's press conference, we're joined by City2 head coach John Hackworth. Please notify us in the chat throughout the press conference if you'd like to ask a question, and then we'll call on you to ask your question. And we'll get started with our first question from Tom Timmerman. Good morning, John. Good morning, Tom. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Um, so first, uh, just thoughts on the Open Cup match and uh, how that uh, had to be a, um, well, it had to be a lot of things probably, but uh, how, how did how did you see the team playing on that one? Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot to unpack in that game. Watched it back a couple times now. Um, you know, we overall really proud of our guys. Um, especially some of the young guys that came on in that game uh, and played some really important minutes and were had had really positive impact. Um, anytime you go to PKs, you know, it's a crapshoot to, you know, but I thought, you know, we did a really good job. We had some young guys hit some big time PKs and um, gave ourselves an opportunity to be successful even in the PKs. So, uh didn't go our way at the end of the day but i think in reflection we have to be proud of the fact that we went to arguably the best team in the usl um went nose to nose with them didn't give up a goal you know in 120 minutes plus um played on a, a big field on a big stage you know and invaluable experience for our team overall offensively were you did you wish you could have created more chances offensively? Didn't seem like there were a whole lot. No, absolutely. But it wasn't really our, our we, we were poor in attacking transition. Um, and therefore, we didn't give ourselves the chance to create um, the true moments. And that's where, you know, looking back at it, we have to we have to get better in those moments. Um, and, and it is difficult. You know, we we are so proactive when we are pressing and repressing that it's a mental shift when you now have the ball and need a bit of composure, need a bit of quality um, to pick the team apart, you know, and, and in a game like that, you're not going to get a lot of chances. So when you do get chances to get in behind or to have a, a you know moment to really penetrate them, we need a little better quality. And again, I think we can evolve uh, in a real positive way going forward, but that is a tough uh, thing to do. And, and you know, we understand it. We, we know it's an area we have to improve. Coming off playing 120 minutes in that game with the Sporting KC game before, what's it going to be like going up against Minnesota on Sunday? It's going to be a mental and physical challenge uh, for sure. Uh, but, you know, our, our, roster and our depth is going to be tested because, you know, you're going to see some rotation in our our lineup uh, for the third game in a row out of necessity. You know, you don't play three games like this in a week, um, especially the way that we are trying to play uh, for, you know, for our professional athletes or any athletes around the world, this type of uh, grind is is really difficult so hopefully some fresh legs will come in and provide us a big boost and, and get us back on track and one change you have to make is the max schneider situation um how are you going to handle that yeah, you know we've played a, a kia watts uh sergio rivas came on against uh louisville and did a really good job um we have kwame awuha who could go in there so we will have to balance that out. Um, it, Max will be missed for sure, but it's something that we have uh, no control over at this point and just got to trust that the guys coming in will do a good job for us. Yeah, and this isn't a short-term thing. This is three games you're going to be without him. So this is not like a one-game fix you have to deal with here. Yep, this is a thing, um, uh, an example of, um, you know, when you lose a player, whether it's to injury, whether it's to, in this case, a red card and, uh, you know, multiple game suspension, it just creates an opportunity for the guys behind them to, to step up. And that's exactly what we're going to need over the, these next three games. 
Have you sorted out the number two goalie situation or are you still using a member of the staff? Uh, well, one, we're super confident in Alex Langer uh, <laughs> if he needs to play. Um, but we have, uh, we just can't announce it yet, um, but we're, we have sorted that out. Okay. How old is Alex? Um, I think Alex is 28 years old. Okay. Well, that's correct. still in the prime. He's young for a goalie then at that point, if you, uh, if you need it. Yeah. I mean, the, for Alex, you know, his decision was to try to pursue a career in coaching. Um, and he's one of the best young coaches I've been around. So, um, but when he jumps into the net in training, I mean, he's really a good goalkeeper too. And again, you know, we're, we're trying to approach this from, uh, we're a developmental team, but we're representing our club as our first team. And, you know, it, it's really tough when you have a, a season ending injury to Eric um, on that note, I mean, Michael Creek played fantastic against Louisville. So, you know, it's a big, uh, you know, positive for us and a good example of guys when they get called upon being ready for it. And that shows a lot of character about our group. Um, and, and we're excited about that. So, uh, you know, we are hopeful that we don't need to, to bring Alex into a game. You know, we have some academy guys that, that – might get an opportunity as well, um, but um, around here it's it's next man up, and and so far that's been really positive from everybody. And so you say Eric is done for the is done for the season. I probably shouldn't have said it uh, like that, but the, it's 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 going to be tough. So um, it's his birthday today, um, <laughs> and and he is uh, going into surgery probably at the right now. And, and we wish him all the best and a speedy recovery. He has our full support. Um, he's a wonderful young man and a, has a bright future ahead of him as a goalkeeper. Um, so our medical staff, I know we'll take good care of him. And he is certainly in our thoughts and prayers. Yeah. Um, and what do you know about Minnesota? Uh, they're, they're a good team and, and very uh, athletic team, a team that so far has uh, not been fearful of putting down some top uh, first team players into the next pro. Um, and I think that's what we're going to see. So difficult. Um, I'll probably repeat this a lot this year, but it's difficult to exactly know who will show up uh, here. But we've seen in their previous games that they definitely are rotating rosters and sending key players down uh, from the first team. And that's just something we're going to have to expect. Um, I don't want to be hogging the question. Uh, is, is there any, I but I don't see anybody else in the queue right now. And so I'm going to keep asking. Okay, yeah, yeah, we can have one one on one. one, one uh, <laughs> no problem with that. Um, hey, Fritz Vollmer, you've subbed him in late in both games. He seems to be like one of the, like, what do you like about him? Because he seems like one of the young guys that you've turned to uh, on a couple occasions. Yeah, Fritz is fantastic. Um, you know, he, I, at this moment, you know, he came back from the Generation Adidas Cup, had really a good performance down there. Uh, while we went to him late, the only reason that we're really going late is, you know, look at our, our, our defense has been really good. Uh, you know, he came on and, and did a job for us late, but he's certainly uh, a player that we believe in very strongly. And, you're going to see Fritz in, in a, you know, much more important role very soon. John, thanks for the time. And, and I'll be listening. So take right. care. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> thanks, Tom. Next up, we have a question from Jim Leaker. I just wanted to thank you for an enjoyable game. I was actually at Hamilton Wednesday night, but my son and I were, were getting updates on the game uh, at the beginning of the show and at intermission. And at the end of the game, it was kind of, oh, my gosh, what a game it must have been. But uh, <clears throat> I did watch the replay. It looked like they were the, the, the team was under a lot of pressure. Physically, they're probably drained. Uh, you, know, you already hit the, hit the message about being physically and mentally drained. 
uh, what was the what was the attitude in the, in the locker room after the game? Was it a we down? Really or was it hey, we we did our we did what we came to do. This group is is about you know they're winners right now. You know um, we haven't lost the game. Yeah, I should probably state that. You know you go to PKs in a competition like an Open Cup, that's technically a draw. We didn't give up a goal in 120 minutes. So. Um, but this group of players expects to win. And so we were disappointed in the locker room. Yeah. We tried to, you know, there's a, there's so many emotions uh, at the end of a, of a game like that when you're eliminated from a competition. It's hard to swallow, you know. Yeah. Um, I think everybody that opened their eyelids yesterday morning um, after the mental and physical exhaustion that we went through, the first thought is, you know, probably can't say the word but it's a uh feeling yeah, like, i've had many of the mornings happy. like that uh, yeah so at the same time you know we have to learn from it so i love the fact that we we expect to win um for a young team to show that kind of character is fantastic and you know we just ask the players to use it use it as the proper motivation to to turn it into a positive um, and make sure that that we're ready to go in our next game, and they're coming fast and furious as we play, you know, Minnesota on Sunday. Yeah. Just one one other question: um, Were the Luligans there? They were, and they were fantastic. Um, did they did they, they break out the new banners? Did you notice them? I noticed a lot of banners. I noticed a lot of city red. Um, so that was great. Um, what I, I mean, we were we were a part of a group that um, they they had signs basically honoring all of the former Open Cup champions. Oh, cool! And and uh, I thought I understood that they were going to try and break them out at the at the Louisville game. I, I'm not sure if they were able to or not. So. But you know, congratulations, coach. It's it's a it's an honor to be a part of this, and you know they're great. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. All right, appreciate it, Jim. <laughs> Thank you. The fans, by the way, to Jim's point, were, were amazing, and they had to go through adversity themselves. Uh, the bus got a flat tire. Um, oh. Somehow, all of our our Luligans got to the game, uh, and were loud and passionate. Seemed to enjoy themselves, and I, I think it's really cool. In, in the young part of our, our club here that you have a fan base and a team that, you know, seems to have similar characteristics. Um, we're gritty, we're tough, we're determined. Um, those are all real positives to build on going forward. I should say we seem to enjoy it too. It seems like our fans are having, having fun. And we, we talk around here about serious fun that, we want to play with a passion all the time because we're, we're very fortunate and blessed to be able to, to represent our city and our club. So uh, it's reflective in both the fans and the players. All right. Next up, we have a question from Tom Shores. Tom, go ahead and ask your question. Typically, Timmerman stole my question. Uh, Bill McDermott asked me to ask you about the absence of, uh, of Schneider. But you use two words, two G words during this conference the grind and grit. Could you just explain for a few seconds how important grit is to getting through the grind? I don't, I don't know how you, you, if you're in what we're in currently, which you know, is a three game stint within the course of a week, um, two on the road, you know, um, talk about the grind of being in hotel rooms, being on buses, um, you know, physically emptying the tank, mentally emptying the tank, and then being able to recover in a short amount of time. I mean, it, it tests your, your grittiness. And, and I, you know, it's something that Luch and Bradley and I have talked about from day one is that we expect our players, we expect our staff um, to, to make sure that we're, that that grit is something that we uh, understand, embrace, enjoy. Um, it, it's not for everybody. Um, 
but it is, I, I honestly think that if you can enjoy it, if you can make it a part of who you are and what you do, um, and have, have the moments where you, you have some fun with it, um, you can make fun of it, you know, um, it's, it is what it is, but it's, it's going to be a principle of ours and our club that we are gritty. Um, we're willing to grind, you know, and, and whether that's during the game or in these moments when you got some difficult challenges away from the field, it's really important. Isn't that just the, the course of the modern game? It's just the constant games and that you, you really have to have as large a roster of people who can actually play uh, as you can, because it's, it does, once the season starts, it doesn't stop, does it? No, and, and it's not just the, 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 the size, you know, and we don't have a, a big roster, but we were very intentional in picking players that we thought had the character um, to, to grow with us as we introduced our, our playing style. And, and so far, those players have been fantastic. They've embraced the, the grittiness that we needed to show. And, and here we are, we still haven't lost a game, uh, you know, and we've got a number of clean sheets. I mean, I think that uh, those kind of performances are good examples of the fact that we are a gritty team. And, and Louisville was really good and pushed us in a lot of ways that, that we hadn't been tested earlier. And, and we showed great resolve in those moments. So now the challenge is to continue to do that and to have a quick turnaround, um, recover from the physical and mental uh, stress that we've been under and, and go back and represent again. But I, I think that Herman on Sunday, you're gonna see our, our fans there. We might, might get some, some rain. I don't think that's gonna bother the players or the fans. I think you're gonna see a lot of flags and drums and songs and, and we're going to do our absolute best to represent ourselves in the best possible way. Can you just explain for a second or two of how important that is for the team, especially when you're going through these periods of just intense games to come home and to get that love? Yeah, it, it, it now it, you know, when we talk about responsibility and accountability, that's, that's it. And when you have fans that will support you through it, it really motivates the players. It's, it makes it that much more important. You know, we're willing to dig deep and go into reserves and, and you know, be uncomfortable because they're there um, supporting us. And that's the special thing. I, I absolutely knew coming to St. Louis that that was gonna happen, <laughs> the, the culture, the soccer culture in this community because of the history. And I've, you know, I haven't been here long, but I've, tried to preach to the, the players that, hey, this is a special place. And and you have to know that when you wear, you know, this badge, you are representing uh, a community that through that history and their culture, um, you know, has certain expectations. And so it's gonna be fantastic to be back home and uh, playing in front of them uh, on Sunday. And, and we will do our absolute best to represent them in all the right ways. Well, and it's cool to hear you say we're, we're back home. That, that's great. Thanks a lot, Coach. No problem. Thank you, Tom. And we'll go ahead and close it out there for today. Thanks, everyone, for joining ahead of our match this Sunday at 7 p.m. against Minnesota United FC2. And it will be streamed live on MLSNextPro.com. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Thank you, Coach. everyone.